Hi everybody, my name is Antoinette and this is Board Game Inquisition, the place where I love to give you two player insights into some of the board games you might want to have in your own collection someday. So Beyond the Rift, a Par Editions mouth card game is a bit of a mouthful, but I assure you it's one well worth tasting. So here's five things I think you need to know about it. Beyond the Rift, a Power Editions mouth card game, is a game in which you play as a fantasy hero and embark upon a series of dungeon style campaigns. On your turn you'll face an event. Each character has two resources, action points and their personal deck, with which to wound the monsters. And you'll need to remove these monsters from play before they can hurt you or others. You'll work as a team to survive the objective within the time frame. And if injured, you'll add wounds, but if you draw a handful, it's game over. Do you think you have what it takes to go beyond the rift and learn more of the tale? Thing one, what's this game all about? So Beyond the Rift is a follow-up to a previous Dragon's Dawn production title, which is Power Edition's Mouth, Abyssal Rift. Um, and this was a, a large kind of mini halting dungeon delving gritty gory game, which oddly enough had like Eurocentric parts like a, a roundel. Um, and if you want to know more about that, you can always check out my review. So interestingly enough, this game is a follow-up straight from that, but it is done entirely in cards. So there's already a big difference there. And in this one, you are unfurling more of a story. Um, and so there are two parts to kind of how you play the game, which is you're reading the story and then you're doing kind of combat or whatever based on the story that's there. Um, it's a kind of a fantasy setting and you're playing as one of four well, fantasy characters, only one of which is female. Um, and basically, yeah, you're unfurling this story through combat. Um, I will say I didn't find the story particularly great um, and I think that's because it isn't really affected by anything you do in the game. The story's just there regardless of what happens. Um, and I found it a little unusual that the first kind of um, mission that we did, I hate calling it mission, um, involved a character called Bastion, um, but neither of us had played Bastion so it felt a bit weird re reading a story when he wasn't there with us. Um, but yeah, there is, a, there is a story to unfold. If anything, it feels like combat fuels the story rather than story fuels combat. Hmm. Now, similar titles to this, well, of course, we have to mention Perdition's Mouth, Abyssal Rift, because, yeah, you know, they're related. It also reminds me in some ways of Aeon's End, um, which is a game where you're using your cards cooperatively to take down a monster. Thing two, what kind of actions are you going to be performing on your turn? So Beyond the Rift really focuses on action points and hand management. At the start of your turn, you get a set number of action points, depending on what character you're playing as. Um, and you can use these for things like drawing cards, discarding cards to draw cards, gaining armor, and probably something special depending on your character as well. And that's all great, but that's not what you really want action points for. What you really want them for is to be able to play cards from your deck. Each character has their own unique deck with its own different play style um, and all of the cards are costed in terms of your action points. Um, the cool thing about the cards is that you can often connect them together so you can play multiples um, like assisting each other and there's also a cost on many of the cards that you can assist you know the other players with as well. Um, so this really brings out the cooperative element here where you're trying to figure out well if you play this and I play this and we put this together we can take down the big thing um, which is really really cool. So monsters now are not as easy as I would have liked. Um, the monsters um, often have multiple wounds, but normally for most attacks, you can only do one wound at a go, meaning they have a tendency to hang around and be persistent. Now, the cool part is, is when you wound them, they get that gets kind of added to their stat line and it affects, you know, how you can engage with them. So sometimes it will lower their defense or lower their armor, you know, stuff like that until you can remove them entirely from the game. And if you do get hit by a monster, you'll get a fatigue into your deck. Um, and also every time you go through your deck, which you will do quite often, there's a lot of card draw here, and um, you'll also get fatigue in there. And it's game over if you end up with a handful of fatigue because they're the cards you can't discard. 
Um, I have to say the timer on this can be quite tight. So most of the campaigns are set for a number of rounds. You have a number of rounds in which you have to do something. Um, and I like that element of it. It definitely kept you on your toes. Overall, I think this is a really slick game um, that's really easy to pick up and just play. Thing three on the table. So unfortunately this one isn't much of a looker when it's set up on the table and I think that's to do with this kind of dark aesthetic. Um, it doesn't really stand out a whole lot but the player boards are nice, you'll spot those a mile away. Um, it doesn't take up a lot of space on the table, um, it's very very tidy in fact. Um, and set up for this is a little bit of work because you do have to reference the rule book um, to set up the exact you know scenario each time which involves you looking for specific cards and things like that. Um, so it is a little bit of work. Now it takes two of us about 50 minutes to play and well I think the rule book is actually quite good um, I think a little bit of tidying would be nice here and there and that's simply because you have to reference the rule book often um, like every time a monster attacks or anything like that you have to go and look it up and you do become intimately familiar with it. Um, now replayability wise I don't know I part of me thinks that the story might actually hold this back from being more replayable but that might just be me I'm not sure why you would want to go back and hear the same story again um, however there are more stories being added in the Kickstarter than I've had access to so far so maybe that would kind of spread it out a bit but also maybe you're the sort of person who wants to go back and do it better. Thing four how does this game look and feel? Well, Beyond the Rift, much like its predecessor, has a very distinctive look, which is that kind of gritty, horror, you know, fantasy 90s vibe. And while it's an aesthetic I can definitely appreciate, I do wish they'd just taken it a bit further here or done a bit more with it. Um, because the art on the monster cards and on the character cards is really cool and interesting. And then there's a border around them that just takes it to like 20 years ago. Um, and I find that just a little bit jarring. Um, now, component wise, while I've got a prototype and everything I have seems to be all fair and balanced, um, but the question I have here is would I take this game down off a shelf if I saw it in a shop? And I'm not sure that I would. Now maybe it's not aimed at me. Um, but the problem I have with that is that there's a really interesting kind of cool game in here and I want you all to go and look at it. And I think the art holds it back a little bit. Thing five, is this game actually any good? For me, the notion of turning a big dungeon crawler with miniatures and maps and story into a card game seemed dubious, um, but I'm incredibly impressed with what Beyond the Rift has done here. Really does feel like the bigger game, but it takes way less time to play. It's much easier to learn um, and it's easier to set up and tear down. Um, I really love how this game has been put together. I think it's a really, really good card game. Um, I love the cooperative elements. Um, I, it really felt like we were helping each other. Like this assist card idea is brilliant. And then changing kind of your attacks and things together, all good. I love that this is a game where you get to touch your deck a lot, which is one of my favourite features. Um, you get to draw a lot of cards, you discard a lot of cards, you're maybe going through your deck kind of fast looking for specific things. Um, I liked it. However, I did feel a little bit stifled by the fact that you can't adjust your deck yourself. Um, it's not a deck builder, it all comes ready for you. And even when you acquire things like treasures, which have to be put into your deck and cards removed, the cards you remove are already chosen for you. So I miss that kind of freedom. Now, there are some ways around it and the game has very cleverly added lots of ways for you to discard cards so that you could always get rid of cards you didn't feel like playing and somehow use them in a positive way, which I thought was super smart. Um, the thing with the monsters and the two, well, the one wound, <laughs> well, they have multiple wounds, but you can only do one um, normally unless you're super special. Um, yeah, it, it used to bother me a lot in the original Paraditions Mouth um, game, but in this, I think it, it's done quite nicely because when you wound something, you add a wound card underneath it and it changes the stat line of the monster. So it feels like you have achieved something even if it hasn't died. Um, so this is a game where monsters will be hanging around and you'll have to deal with them for multiple turns and I think it did add a sense of urgency to the game as well seeing them all set out there so what I didn't like before I kind of like now it's nice it's not too bad at all um 
The only other thing I suppose I would like to have seen is a more connection between the story and what you're actually doing in the game. So, you know, even just something as simple as a location, like you start out in an inn, it would, and the, you, what you do on the board is you just lay out the, the monsters. Um, you go to somewhere else, a lair, and then you know what you do? You just lay out the monsters and they don't look any different. I think something like a card that went down that said, you know, you're currently in the inn, here's what's happening, would really have helped the game a little bit and to marry that story with the combat, because otherwise it does just feel like, what's the next thing we're going to fight? Overall, I think this is a really great card game it's, it's a, and it's a really good adaptation of the previous title um, and I think there's so much fun to be had here. So do I think you should have Beyond the Rift a Power Editions Mouth card game in your collection? I think if you're the sort of person that really enjoys dungeon crawlers but doesn't have the time or the space for the bigger box games you should definitely go and check it out on Kickstarter on July the 19th. You've been watching Board Game Inquisition. Why not like or subscribe to the channel so you can get updates about my future videos? Or if you've got any comments or queries you'd like to make about Beyond the Rift, why not shout them off in the comment box below? Tune in again next time for some more short and informative board game reviews.